Hello. Welcome everyone. This is a series of videos of six seconds that I'm going to share with you. The description of functionality. First, we'll uh, be describing and sharing with you the electronic lock system. Here is the circuit to it and uh, first of all uh, we start with reading this text you will find here are the logo electronic waste benefit which is a philosophy of using electronic waste to create these uh, circuits and here is a warning for safety uh, concerns and uh, make sure you are experienced in working with electricity we also uh, expect uh, some knowledge of electronics because this is not going to be a lecture or a tutorial on electronics it's a circuit sharing of uh, ideas on circuits that you can do right uh, the expected age of uh, uh, anyone who would want to do this is around 10 years and more uh, right these are the required resources uh, well much of uh, the resources are simple and straightforward uh, you can either buy or you can actually make them yourself the internet is full of examples of how you can do this uh, notice here on number eight that you need just need a multimeter and some tools the oscilloscope is or the logical analyzer is just you know, optional the software uh, please you can download on the internet there is free software uh, the one that i've used for peak programming is uh, the peak bgm very well uh, polished uh, software for programming for burning peaks um, Proteus development suit. This one uh, you can download the trial version. This one you have to buy. There's no free uh, version of it. Uh, or you can find any other uh, software for simulation or to open the, the documents. You can draw them because there are circuits uh, provided with the schematics that I've shared with you. Then uh, the ALD Micro is a free software uh, for ladder programming of PIX, a uh, very nice software uh, which actually also teaches you how to uh, program like uh, you would program uh, POCs. Then there is flow code, uh, there is a free version, uh, please use the free version, you can actually download the free version. So what all this needs is your patience, your time, your passion and your dedication. And uh, it's coming from me, Taurai Mirimi. Thank you. I hope you enjoy electronics. So now, uh, what you are going to discuss here now is this circuit here. But first of all, I would like to show you how this circuit is constructed. As you can see here, uh, they are basically uh, one, two, three, four ICs. Uh, this is one IC. The 4066 is just a switch, uh, uh, an analog switch. This 4017 is a combinational logic Johnson counter, a take a 10 Johnson counter. Uh, the IC1 is an oscillator, the 4060. Then this one, the versatile, our lovely uh, IC, the LM555, the triple five uh, timer uh, IC, and uh, uh, the other related uh, components around this uh, ICs for it to make to work. So you will find that there are only uh, one, two, three, four ICs. These ones are not ICs. These are jumpers or you can actually use uh, deep switches or you can use hard wiring, straight hard wiring to solder and then here is a keypad where 
you actually mount your entry keypad here uh, you can mount it anyway or you can buy a, a, a pre-made keypad and remember please it's not a matrix keypad it's a straightforward switch switches uh, one side having a zero volt or negative volt then the other side going through these uh, switches to actually activate uh, the, the 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 circuit for uh, uh, code entry right so uh, how does this circuit works our key uh, uh, circuit here is this counter the Johnson counter what it does it if it receives a clock pulse or an enable pulse uh, depending on the configuration that you you have made this uh, counter I've configured is that it actually mm, changes state when the pulse that is coming is on the falling edge, what is called a falling edge, or on the trailing edge. So it is configured in that the clock input must be tied to the positive supply, uh, and then the enable input is actually the clocking input and here the set uh, find the data sheet for this IC so that you can actually understand how it works so a pause comes then when it is falling that's when it changes to the next output so normally when you power it it can be in any state uh, because the power will not be stable so uh, but normally when it's reset it must actually have a, a high output on pin number three the q0 and on the carry out pin number 12 must be also high so what happens is you have a clocking s a signal coming from the triple five timer configured in the form of a, a monostable oscillator uh, it clocks this IC so that it changes this the, the, the outputs which are cascading so output number zero uh, if there's a pulse changes to output number one goes to two goes to three so you have four digits that you have entered so first digit it goes to two second digit goes to four third uh, digit goes to seven and then the fourth digit goes to number ten where it has an output where you uh, can use the output to power something or to deactivate something, activate something, whatever you want to do. Now the oscillator is there to reset this uh, counter if you take long time to actually enter the code and also it also reset if the code is entered and then after some time it resets back to lock position so you can use a locking system of your choice if you want to lock or if it's or get opening whatever you are using or if it's an alarm whatever but it will actually reset it after some time so the configuration here you can change around to suit your needs modify it so what happens is here uh, we have a, a clocking a signal into the counter then here you have a reset signal into the counter right here on the output how it it, it does is you put in a key uh, which is programmed using these uh, the circuit switches or links and the programming is I will actually show you later is actually done through a, a a certain uh, number of rules that you should do the, the programming and then once you press the correct key uh, the correct key will actually bring a negative to these analog switches they are just switches the first one if it is the first digit it goes to I see 4a here uh, the first digit is yes. you can see from pin number one it comes here goes there to pin number uh, two and one there which should be linked 
or if it is uh, another uh, uh, key that you have pressed in it will go to another key like number two here oh, it's only the first the first position as you can see all the first positions are actually uh, wired together the second positions are also wired together third fourth like that and fifth right so if the first key is pressed in the first position it goes here which would be the counter is in reset uh, condition so pin number three output zero pin number three is actually a high or it's actually a positive play so it enables this switch uh, which goes uh, to switch on between a and b so if you bring a low here through pressing a switch which is wired here the first digit whichever first digit on this uh, which I call the cluster switch clusters uh, um, the the negative will actually be transferred to B and B is actually common for all the four switches and it goes to actually uh, pause the our mono stable here it brings a negative here or a zero which is transferred through this uh, capacitor to uh, the pin number two of the triple five timer. Uh, please research on the monostable configuration of our triple five timer. There is a lot of information on that. The net. So the timing circuit uh, is actually between uh, is done by R6 and C4. So the value of C4 normally is used to actually determine how low how, how big is the pulse duration. So. Uh, for instance, this is 22 nanofarads uh, to give you a certain period of time of the pulse which will clock the, the counter. So a pulse comes in negative here. If you have a negative stop here, the output of the timer goes high. It goes from zero to the supply voltage 12 volt, which is a high. And then after some time, determined by these two components, the resistor R6 and C4. Uh, the counter will actually move to the next uh, uh, output which is P number 2 output Q1 which means this one is now disabled it's not uh, in the on state it's off and then the other two are also off the only switch that is now on is IC4B so it's waiting for the second key uh, these are you can configure them to be in microseconds or milliseconds uh, better milliseconds is fast enough for human uh, dimension so uh, the second switch is now activated so uh, you key in the second digit which can be any digit uh, but the second position must be wired here uh, which means all the second positions are actually common so you press in you bring another the law goes again and pulse this one and then it pulse the clock the sorry the counter and then moves to the next which is the third switch and so on and so forth until it reaches uh, switch number four and then when uh, the fourth uh, code digit is pressed in this one also brings a, a pulse here and then a pause here clocks the counter the counter moves to the next with its position number five now the position number five is now the what the output which you can use for whatever you would want to use now uh, this should happen during the time that this oscillator is counting uh, within the time that the oscillator is counting and uh, during that time uh, you must actually be you have uh, activated uh, the, the, the 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 output or the 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 the, 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 the lock. Now uh, you notice that uh, every time you press in the correct key, uh, if you press the correct key here, you have a pause here. This pause will actually come here and reset the counter the, the, the oscillator sorry 
then if the oscillator is uh, reset it starts from zero so every time you press in the correct key it goes to zero to start again and then uh, if you wait too long it will actually reach a point where it gets to output Q14 which is output number three and resets this uh, counter and if this counter is reset you have to restart again so this is how this one is working or right if you press in a wrong key which is a digit which is not within the code uh, you s you notice that um, you have a reset condition also uh, on the on the counter this is how it is done you program the wrong keys with uh, shorting the position number five position number five is only there to actually uh, uh, reset the counter when a wrong key is pressed so position number five can only be the only one uh, existing on each uh, switch set or the cluster so these are the rules that uh, I would show you so position number five you reset the counter so position number five is for the wrong key so if you press in first two digit correct the third digit wrong the counter will reset to zero and then you must restart or if you are someone who don't know then the the lock will not actually activate so this is how it it basically works and uh, uh, Right, I'll show you uh, on a, a simulation uh, a part here. Uh, so this is what uh, you, you would be doing. Right, this is a simulation of the timing circuit. So what is it has here? Uh, you have here a, a transistor array which will actually be switched on if you switch on it goes negative on the output please this is a ULN2004 look for the data sheet for it and actually and that if you know already right uh, no problem so you bring in a, a, a law here uh, if you put a positive on the input the output becomes low uh, so the output becoming low here it transfers this law to clock the triple five timer and the output on number three goes high and then when it goes high uh, because this counter is configured to actually step on the trailing edge so it actually clocks and goes to two from three to two but once you the first time you power it because everything else is confused the output here becomes high on the triple five timer and then later on goes low it will actually step to number two when we just switch on or get confused this demo i will demonstrate how it works okay we start simulation here yeah, you see it has actually uh, stepped to number two i could have put a reset switch here to reset it but watch what happens if i trust to uh, clock in the the signals to the to the counter and this LED I just put in to see to show you that uh, you can see uh, the the stepping happens only when the LED is going off it doesn't happen when the LED is coming on it, it is a trailing edge stepping so you press here goes on and then off goes on off and then steps now on seven output pin number seven goes to ten and then goes to one and you can watch on output uh, 12 here what is happening there uh, these are well the what happens with the 4017 you must learn about it now uh, you can see the time the LED is on uh, if I change the value of this capacitor here stop the simulation sorry if I change the, the value of this capacitor here uh, to double uh, let me put it maybe 300 nano you will see the change on the time of the, the time the LED is coming on and already you can see 
it is take now taking longer three times three times if I step see taking now three times so you can change the time of the, the pulse uh, which is called pulse duration so that's the simulation for the our timer I stop that one yeah, I think you can do it on your own because I've included these files in the share folder right this is our the simulation for the lock right uh, now uh, this we have described what is happening here the LED is just uh, showing you uh, the, the, the pulsing of the of the of the uh, oscillator now here is our code our code is actually here uh, sorry let me zoom it properly okay right so here's our cluster yeah uh, for the switches you remember these ones they follow the keys so this is for key number one key number two key number three key number four key number five key number six key number seven key number eight key number nine you can add until uh, i don't know 100 keys uh, or you can also add up to 10 uh, uh, digits which means you can actually have uh, more uh, uh, keys or more digits in your code uh, but still the same setup meaning but now your key cluster must have if they are 10 digits it means you need 10 switches to select the positions so these are the set position selectors now the first one is the first key first digit the first position is the first uh, digit it shows you the first digit so if you go look around on the clusters you'll see that they should be a first uh, position uh, program programming is just switching on you know like this you switch on it's now connected or you can hardwire it or whatever because this one is now a simulation uh, if you put another first one it means you now have two codes you can have two people having codes you now now have two codes or you can put it anywhere you can put number nine in it's proceed number one it doesn't matter if you put even here another one again position number four because there is a position number four elsewhere sorry uh, it can't be here because now this one is uh, having pin number five and pin num and the position number five is activated it means you can't use that uh, cluster it means this is a wrong key so if this one is uh, on person number five activated it means key number five is uh, sorry key number six is actually a wrong key it's not in the code so uh, these are the rules for programming uh, i'll show you uh, where the, the what the rules would say so now uh, for this one uh, so we have person number one is on key number four yeah Position number two, oh, it's position number two, it's position number two is on key number five. Position number three is on key number three. Position number four is on position number one. So our code is four, five, three, one. I can change it. I can put here, uh, remove this one and program that one. So our code now becomes this is number eight five three one or i can change here and put uh, this one here in right remember if this is the wrong key you must actually program it to wrong key right and then so now uh sorry uh, this one's supposed to be number three number three number three yeah right so position number th that's eight five seven one. So this is our code eight five eight five seven one eight eight five seven one. That's our programmed code. So if I 
start our simulation here. A key in eight five seven one. You see the motor is now turning because now it's on here. The relay is on here. So I can deactivate it by pressing in any other wrong key. It actually resets the the, 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 the counter or the the, 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 the the locking system or I can wait for some seconds and then it actually uh, resets so if I pr press in again 8 5 7 1 it's turning okay, it's just slow because uh, the computer is loaded you will see that after some seconds you must watch here when there is an output here the counter reaches this one it will just stop to reset the counter and this is Proteus version number 8 Proteus uh, you see now it stops so it resets and stops yeah, this you can do it on your own and play around yeah, you can draw this circuit and simulate it by yourself and learn so now uh, the rules of the programming of of uh, the keys are here here there is the keys not in code you must actually program them to position number five they are the wrong keys and then all four positions must be set you must actually have four positions position number one position number two position number three and four somewhere on the key clusters position number five is can only be on its own if you program a cluster on position number five that key is out it will reset the counter so it's out uh, you can repeat the keys meaning that uh, if you want a code like four 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 it means uh, four is on position number one four also is on position number two so the cluster on on key number four is all set all four positions set meaning you have quite four you can also repeat a uh, position on different uh, uh, clusters uh, meaning uh, if you can have a four four uh, like a four four five uh, seven and then you can also have a three four five seven something like that meaning that uh, five and three are actually on position number three set yeah uh, right uh, so you can also add other clusters to make you the keys more keys than you can want there's no limit uh, and there's only a limit of number of uh, uh, code digits that you can put because it's limited by the uh, counter you can improve it and add more counters if you want more digits but anyway normally four digits is enough secure enough okay that's okay uh, enough for uh, the rules now uh, I think uh, for now uh, this is all how it uh, it works if you have any questions please you can email me the email is here uh, uh, the gmail tauraimirimi at gmail.com or small letters please I will take time to uh, reply to you uh, but if you have any questions I'll make sure that I reply to you right, I'll share these folders on uh, Google Docs uh, there are six uh, circuits that I've done and uh, that I'll share and uh, they are open they you can do whatever you want them. Uh, so uh, these circuits will actually come in